Hey guys, and welcome back to the Courageous Nerd YouTube channel for another interview. I'm Connor, and joining me today is actor Rick Cosnett. We chat all about Rick's new film, To Me Monk, as well as his work on series such as The Flash, Quantico, and more. If you enjoyed this interview or any of the others on the channel, please be sure to like and subscribe. So welcome, Rick, and thanks for taking the time to do this. My pleasure, Connor. Good to be here. Sure. And just reading up about you a bit, I mean, I think it's fair to say that you've lived quite an eclectic life, you know, born in Zimbabwe, then Australia, working in the United States, I suppose. Whereabouts in that journey were you inspired to become an actor? Yes, absolutely. I feel like I've been knocked around a lot in my privilege, of course. But um um, I, you know, I always, I always wanted to be an actor, funnily enough, when I knew it was a job, um, mm. when I was about eight or something. Um, my parents used to do little um, Gilbert and Sullivan's at an amateur theatre in Zimbabwe. Um, and, you know, not only that, but I think there's just something deep within me that really has a need to express the human experience and um, emulate that and... Um, bring some kind of meaning to this crazy, meaningless world. <laughs> mm. Yeah. Yeah, and actually something that I've, because um, I was mentioning before the call that I've been a fan for a few years and um, something I've read online a while ago is that you're related to Hugh Grant. Is that is that true or is that something that... Yeah, it is actually. Um, oh, wow, okay. Not that close. He's right. my third cousin, my third okay. cousin. Um, and by random coincidence, I was doing a play in Edinburgh mm. next door to these wow. two girls who I, we befriended um, for the whole tour. Yeah. And they ended up being Hugh Grant's first cousins, uh, oh, okay. which was crazy. So, um, you know, our, I think our grands are first cousins. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, um, maybe. You so now I'm really close with them, also, which, yeah. is, which is great. You know, um, yeah. nice to have those girls in, in London and Edinburgh. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, for all you guys know, your common ancestor could have been an actor and hence here you both are. I mean, who knows? Yeah, well, exactly. Way, way back. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Um, one of them was a, um, a general in the, in the British Army, um, the, the person that we stem, we stem yeah, from. Yeah, but, you know, sure. it was always our claim to fame uh, growing yeah. up in the middle of nowhere in Zimbabwe when even before Hugh Grant was famous, you know, we were like, oh, you know, our cousin was in a magazine. We used to tell yeah. him our cousin was in a magazine. Um, and then, yeah, you know, so he has no idea who I am. But yeah, um, uh, that's my life's goal one day is to for him to yeah. say, do you know that I'm Rick Costin's cousin? <laughs> yeah, I mean, um, I don't crossed. know if you're familiar with this, so it's a different side of the family, but... Um, I think Thomas Brody Sangster is also related to him. They worked on Love Actually together. He was the little boy. Maybe maybe you're your different sides. Oh, really? I think he's also related to Hugh Grant. So Probably a lot closer than I am. <laughs> maybe. I mean, I think it was a similar thing. Like, he found out innocuously and, you know, oh, yeah, you're actually related to him. But, yeah, I mean, that's mad then if three of you from the one line and all ends up being actors, that'd be... I yeah, I think I, I I sort of thought it might help. I think uh, originally, I think that's how people found out about it um, mm. on my IMDb. <laughs> In fact, I know it is. Um, <laughs> but you know, no, it, it went completely, of course, unseen until yeah, yeah, I actually yeah. started doing a lot of TV, and people obviously started looking at my biography, and then it got, you know, as the internet does, it got um, duplicated. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, and obviously, I suppose then, away from Hugh, as lovely as he is as an actor, onto your own career, um, your new film, and you have to pardon my French, is it uh, Tu Me Monk? That, yeah, that's right, Tu Me Monk, I mean. Yeah, and uh, I, I was just going to say that obviously it deals with like homosexuality and homophobia as a theme, and obviously you yourself very publicly came out not long ago, and the, the director is also homosexuals I suppose with all those factors in mind like how important like among you all was it you know to tell the story yeah it was um you know a project that I think changed a lot of lives um not uh, mainly in Bolivia and then of course also around the world um mm. because it was a true story the director's true story 
yeah um that he sort of turned into art if you will and he created a play first with, in Bolivia which became a whole movement of people um basically just being honest about their sexuality um and and then he turned it into a film and it's it's really gone the distance you know mm. and I was lucky enough to jump on um when it became a film I just auditioned for it and and kind of got the part but when I was watching it actually in a set of screening in Hollywood I got really emotional and we had a Q&A afterwards and it was the first time in an interview I think I'd said that I was gay um, oh, okay. because I, I really felt the courage you know I, yeah. I felt the movement I felt the, the, the you know the moment mm. um, that we're in right now which you know it used to be lovely for actors to be able to be mysterious which is good because you know a lot of us are kind of shy and introverted of course. And, um, but it was also a bit of a cover up for a certain amount of shame, I think, mm. you know, um, so, uh, you know, and then, and then we had a screening for Academy members cause it was Bolivia's official selection for the Oscars. Um, and there I felt very, very free to talk about, you know, how agents and, and managers really want to protect you in this, mm. in this world. You want to protect yourself. So, you know, being gay just needs to really lose its 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 stigma, and so you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And obviously, you were just mentioning there uh, Rodrigo Bello and his kind of background in developing this story, and he's both writer and director for this film. And I suppose, like, how was your experience of working with someone who's filling both of those roles? Obviously, compared to if he had just been one or the other. Yeah, it was really amazing, to, you know, to be able to have so many tools um, to, sorry, um, to have so many, sorry, to have so many tools, um, yeah. you know, in terms of what he gave me, um, you know, he had, you know, it's really nice to have everything and then some you know and so he was very enthusiastic about saying exactly who I was playing actually which is a person mm. in real life yeah what their experiences are even down to who they are so I could actually really research all of that um and and go into you know a lot a lot more depth in terms of creating you know this iceberg and then you just you just show the tip of that iceberg obviously in the film and then even more so because often you know it all gets condensed down and so there's there's scenes that we did that are not in the film which often happens um but it you know creates a more beautiful and, and rich hopefully world yeah yeah and is having like the play as a source material was that beneficial for you going into this absolutely a hundred percent was um you know, um, from my life experience and life experience in the US as well mm. as, yeah, this other person's story that I was telling. Um, yeah. I felt very honored to carry that. And yeah, I think learned a lot about, about you know, the gay world and also about, um, you know, about living with HIV, which my character is, um, mm. a, a, you know, and what that means now um and the stigma that used to be attached to it that's now luckily fading in a really good way um but what that might feel like um the neuroses that that might create in someone you know um the yeah he 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 really is beyond dedicated um which is why i think this project has gone so far artistically and also commercially yeah yeah and I guess obviously like moving away from uh, film as a medium, you've also worked extensively in television and um, you've had the, I guess, unfortunate caveat of, you know, being able to star in a lot of great shows, but also being killed off. And um, yes. do, any, do any fandoms in particular of the shows you were in stand out in terms of like still showing support even after you've left? Sorry, what was the last part of that question? Yeah, I'm, I mean, about. like, do any of like the fans of those shows stand out in terms of continuing to support you even after you've left after being killed off? Yeah, hundred percent. You know, there's such a sweet sorrow around around a lot of a lot of, especially the Flash, which has gone on forever and ever. Yeah. And um, people are always, you know, hoping that I'll come back, and so am I. Um, and it is sad because it was sad when I left because we were all really good friends yeah um 
and it was a great, you know, um, you know, it would have been great for me <laughs> in a lot of mm -hmm. ways of to stay yeah. on. But, um, you know, so there is there is that kind of sweet sorrow. It was such a beautiful experience, but one that was was just kind of short lived. Um, and, you know, the fans have been amazing. They've been incredible. They've really sustained me for the last, you know, however many years I've been invited all over the world and I've taken them up on it. You know, I've been all the way from Paris to Poland, Lithuania, Australia, you know, Wales. I mean, mm. I've, I've been lucky enough to, to go out and meet them all over the world. I mean, it's been really cool and, and they're hilarious and wonderful. And, and, you know, I just, I just kind of know what it's like with people I'm obsessed with, like my favorite shows sure. or, you know, my favorite actresses or whatever and I, I sort of think oh maybe it's a bit like that you know and, mm. and uh and I try I try and give people a little bit of uh a little bit of something you know yeah 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 and it's actually um it's uh, really lucky you mentioned the flash because that's a perfect segue into my next question you obviously you were a regular in in the first season and um considering how closely involved you were with Candace Patton as Iris did you guys have any like kind of chemistry reading at, at the audition process or were you like brought in separately and they kind of you know fingers crossed they can do something um no yeah we actually never read together before we started um okay, cool. danielle panabaker and i went through the audition process together so there was other people for our roles mm. we kind of got down further and further and then actually no like my studio test there were three actresses i think who came in for iris yeah um, Candace wasn't actually one of them um so yeah I don't know what the process was um mm. behind those doors um you know she's she's such an obvious choice uh now you know she's incredible um yeah and so I think it was just lucky um because I think we were very dedicated to our roles but sometimes you can't predict you can't predict the, that kind of kind of chemistry and Candace and I had it for sure I mean it wasn't it, well, you know, as Olivia Coleman said, it was not a hardship. Right, um, sure. She is, as you know, like just absolutely stunning. She has this sparkle in her eyes. She always just crackling, you know, with, um, oh yeah, with magic. Mm. And and so it was very easy to, you know, from being Eddie Thorne as well, who has yeah. this groundedness. He's everything I think I always wanted to be or maybe my dad always wanted me to be you know just very sane mm. very so awesome that you can't actually hate him in the end because he's just really kind and able and um all these great things and it just it was a great combination I think him and Iris also you know no know, knowing that it was destined to fail obviously because of course, yeah you know, it, it's it's in written written in the history and in, in the comics so it was really fun to sort of start you know in that place and then know that we're gonna go somewhere completely different yeah yeah and i think you know in, in particular that first season which is obviously the one that you're most connected to but i think the writing in that is probably the best i think of the seasons so far because they could have gone such an obvious route with eddie like being an original character he's not from dc comics you know he wasn't lifted you know directly so i feel like they could have really made him the obvious kind of um, douchey yes. boyfriend that Barry, you know, you're meant to root for him to kind of, you know, get him out of the way uh, in, in a sense. But yeah, I mean, to your point, I think, I think you both played, um, played the parts really well and really sold that relationship. And, you know, obviously, you. Yeah. I think, I think obviously years later, most yeah. people would, would know how it ended. And, and I think the reason why people are still holding on to Eddie is testament to what you guys did with those characters. Thank you. Yeah, it was really a collaboration. You know, it's 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 Eddie reflected in in these people. You know, in um, obviously in Iris and Joe and Barry, and um, it's you know it's really that uh, you know the producers as well and the creators were really and even the casting uh, director David Rappaport yeah were really really set on making him making him really nice because mm. I find it very easy to play an arsehole and it's really fun. Right. But yeah. it, it was really, it was really good to be steered away from that. Um, and I, I feel like I really embraced it. Yeah. Mm. It was really fun. I'm just curious because obviously when the character and yourself got announced and they saw, okay, it's a guy called Thorn and his first name starts with E, they made the natural connection to Eobard Thorn. And like, did you ever think at one point, 
you'd be the reverse flash with, with a kind of unequivocal saying or oh, no like you know that's, that's um, a whole different character originally or... I, I don't know exactly what they had in mind but originally i was actually supposed to be jay garrick right um, yeah in disguise um and and then they they sort of changed it um just before the pilot started shooting i think mm. they said i was going to be the reverse flash um and then they sort of changed it just before we started shooting the second episode mm. um and that's when they were like okay you're going to be his his great 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 grandfather yeah wow wow yeah i mean um i think you know the comic book purists would have you know thought they knew what was going on just by seeing the name thorn and like okay yeah uh, and especially considering he was a natural antagonist to barry it would have seemed the obvious way to go with it but you know they kind of pulled up the rug which is really interesting i think yeah totally totally i mean they kept everyone on our toes including us <laughs> mm. maybe they were just telling us yeah i know um i think you know just a whole a whole bunch of really creative um amazing people in there and it was really fun it was really really great i was yeah yeah i was, I was very we were we were all you know took it so so much to heart i think all seven of us who were mm. original regulars anyway i mean i'm sure yeah, yeah. people have run with it in such beautiful ways now but we you know we really cared so deeply about the story and about making this because you know it, it might have not gone anywhere we we just were going to do a pilot and that was a, yeah. a spin-off spin yeah um and you know there was certain things that might have gone wrong um at any mm. point um but i think I think, yeah, you know, it was definitely a collaboration and I was very happy to to be a part of that in the very beginning. It's very special. Yeah, and just kind of going back to something you said about knowing, you know, Eddie and Iris because of the comic book history and you kind of knew roughly what was going to happen in terms of that direction. Like, did you have any concern about your long-term future on the show, considering that, I mean, pretty much you and... I Tom mean, Cavanaugh naively the most looking unsafe. back on it, this, that's a question, you know, looking back yeah. on it, hindsight is twenty twenty. and your question is very succinct. And I think mm. I was I was a bit naive to think that, no, I, you know, I just kind of signed this five-year contract or whatever it was. And I was like, oh, cool. You know, we're just going to mm. kind of go with it. But we also didn't know how long the show would last for. Fair um, enough, yeah. But yeah, it was a shock to me when I, when I found out that I was, that I was, that they were killing me, um, for sure. It was shocked to all of us. We, we all very emotional um about it but you know sometimes you have to sacrifice um people to make the show more interesting and you know now and then people i'm sure were riveted as to you know who was going to be next or mm. um, you know and i think they did the same thing on arrow and they were probably really smart to do it you know yeah um, it, it it was a real a real death and it was really sad and um i always wanted to die on tv very dramatically actually when right. i was little this cartoon called thunder sub where there was this little boy and his twin identical twin and his name was rick oh. and i told everyone in grade three that i acted in the cartoon because he had died very dramatically the night before with this kind of anime you know this gorgeous anime uh, girl april who like cried over his over his you know uh, body in his bed and and uh <laughs> mm. all my dreams came true <laughs> so yeah <laughs> yeah and i suppose like in terms of potentially making a comeback at some point i mean obviously you said there's been like several fan theories i think the flash is the only show left in that string that you got killed off from that's actually still on right that you could come back to if an opportunity arose down the line yeah absolutely. vampire diaries isn't on anymore and so on and so forth but... yeah yeah it is yeah so fingers crossed fingers crossed yeah. we, we hold mean, out it, hope yeah there's been like several like theories over the years have any caught your eye or did you ever think oh that could actually work but you know that would make sense yeah 100 percent. i think i think cobalt blue makes a lot of sense yeah to me um it's something that i had kind of thought about from the very beginning mm. um you know i think obviously with the different timelines it would be yeah. so interesting to have him come back as someone completely different, but you know, with the same soul, the same kind mm. of heart, in in a completely different, um, obviously, job, and um, you know, shake things up in Central City <laughs> again. Yeah. Um, 
uh, it would be super fun. And, you know, I'm sure everyone would be, would be really happy um, to, to, him, to play with me again. Um, yeah. So I think it will happen. I do. I, I think, yeah. you know, it'd be super, super beautiful and interesting to, um, to have Eddie come back in some, in some really creative way. Yeah. And I think it's a testament to your importance on the show. Like they wouldn't just bring you back to be some meta of the week. They probably have some really kind of big story, you know, to, to, to get you back. I feel like, you know, just because yeah, of it's like, your, it's your like history maybe, with the show. Maybe I am the, like you know arc enemy of there maybe i'm the actual underlying villain maybe i'm time you know mm. maybe i'm like yeah that would be fucking cool <laughs> yeah and i guess because of like the different things like in your mind was like would you be more interested in playing like somehow the eddie that shot himself and somehow he's back to life or like an eddie that's on a different earth like which would which one of those would be more interesting to you as an actor i suppose if that makes sense. I think you know, just anything that has that is good writing. I I, I know mm. it's kind of not answering the question, but yeah, um, you know, for example, when I came back and um, wasn't aware that we'd gone back in time, um, and I and Barry said, "Can you please leave a birthday note for Iris?" Yeah, um, the writing was so beautiful. It was so easy to do. It was it, it affected so many people emotionally, um, and so. You know, if the writing's good, I'm in. No matter if I'm Eddie or if I'm on another Earth, or you know, if all those all those good conflicts are in there and all those juicy things, um, that's what I I really you know take to. And it's 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 so it's so beautiful when the writing the writing's really really just sings. Yeah, um, so fun to do, and um, you know. And if it's not, it's just a bit like, it's fine, you know, it's fine, but you don't want it to be fine. You want it to be spectacular. Yeah. And I mean, obviously, you know, counting Eddie, like, um, would you say you've got, I mean, it's a bit of a macabre question, but would you, would you say you've got a favorite TV death that you've had, you know, or is that something you've ever thought about? Um, yeah. I mean, you know, I think, um, I don't know. I think my death on Quantico, I really, I really loved, right. really love that. Um, just because also the, you know, the episodes leading up to it when he just completely lost the plot and threw himself into traffic mm. and was so hysterical, um, you know, getting to act with Andre New Ellis and um, be, you know, that emotional uh, was really, really fun for me. And then, you know, jumping out of a hotel window. Um, yeah. It's pretty, pretty, pretty cool. Yeah, um, having to do a stunt as well. So, like, I had to first of all do almost like a play because we mm. shot the whole episode, all those scenes actually in one go, um, back mm. to back, just continuously. And at the very end of it all, I had to back up out of the window, and then I had, you know, and then and then flip out backwards onto the wind, <laughs> out the window yeah. and land, like you know, however many feet below on a mattress. It was, yeah, it was a pretty intense day. I think I think yeah. young you got his wish and then some with the whole like wanting to die dramatically on Definitely. TV. Definitely, yeah. I think we've really ticked that box off. Yeah, and we can let it go now. <laughs> yeah, I mean, now you know, I'm, I mean, that has to be like I'm clause, gonna... it, you know, in in your contract. I can at least get to season two, you know, without getting killed yeah, no, in some I think, way. I think it's going to be now. Like, I'm never allowed to die ever again, and right. I have to go to the very very end of every mm. season. Because, I mean, at, at this point, you're almost a walking spoiler. Oh, wait, Rick Cosnett. Yeah, okay. I mean, look yes. at the watch. How, how long until he's gone, you know? Yeah, uh, me and Sean sort of, Bean. Yeah. Sean um, Bean and I should do a, a TV show together. Mm. <laughs> it just lasts forever. Yeah. I mean, you, you could set it in the afterlife. It's going to be really ironic about it, I suppose. But, <laughs> you know. 100%. Yeah. We could be trapped forever in the afterlife. Yeah. You'll never see the end of us. Yeah, I mean, I suppose kind of like circling back to to Mimonk, I mean, and, um, do you have any other projects as well as that that you're able to talk about right now? Or, uh, um, I'm not able to talk about. Actually, that's what my agent was calling me because uh, we're closing a deal on something, sure. uh, which I can't talk about for the summer. But um, apart from that, um, I just did a film called Go to the Moon, 
about Margaret Hamilton, who was the first, one of the very first software engineers who yeah, was really, yeah, yeah. Um, who helped, um, you know, who was the main head of, of software engineering for NASA, um, mm. took the Apollo missions to the moon, and her story's really pretty untold, so that was a cool project to be a part of. I'm also developing a show called Jill and Sue, where I play Jill, um, who's a um, South African woman in her late 50s who moves right. to the, um, the really expensive um, suburb of Vaucluse on the Sydney Harbour front. Mm. Um, and yeah, it's, I've, it's something I've been wanting to do for a very long time. Yeah, and I suppose like professionally or, or personally, is there anything you hope to accomplish with 2021? I mean, we were talking before the recording about how it's been a challenging year for everyone. Is there anything, like, any goals you've set for yourself? Yeah, absolutely. You know, I have one of big kind of health exercise goals, um, which will obviously lead into, into acting as well. Um, yeah, there's going to be a lot of thing, big things coming this year for me. And um you know it's important to be prepared emotionally spiritually physically um so you can really make the most of of the opportunities so yeah there's there's a lot of good things on the horizon and um you have to be very realistic about it and make sure that you're like for me just super focused yeah mm. yeah that's actually all the questions i had prepared but is there any like closing comments or anything you want to say to anyone maybe I'd like to round this off. No, I'd just like to say, you know, thank you first of all to all the fans out there who have been so supportive and also, you know, love seeing me in new projects, always asking about what's next. Um, mm -hmm. So To Me Monk is, you know, just such a beautiful film. I can't ex explain how important it is um, and how touching it is. And people are really going crazy for it. Um, you know, I think it's kind of an instant classic in a weird way. Um, and it's out now on VOD and a certain platforms in the US, iTunes, um, yeah. and then hopefully coming out later this year where it is internationally on um, some, some, some other platforms that are you know, even more accessible. So it's very exciting uh, time for the film and I'm really excited to be a part of it. Yeah. For sure. I mean, best of luck with the film and with what else you were mentioning. I mean, even what you can't talk about right now but i'll say thanks nice. again for taking the time uh take care and stay safe thank you connor you too it's been a pleasure